Hello everyone and welcome back to our discussion on intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma and today we are going to discuss some recent advances on the management of intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma also discuss a few cases that we have been managing on this disease to highlight the importance of NGS understanding immunotherapy and targeted therapy when it comes to treating this disease amongst many other diseases. So when we talk of unresectable disease, this includes both locally advanced as well as metastatic disease. A new tumor microenvironment based classification is now available for cholangiocarcinoma as is true for many other cancers. And this classification helps us in understanding how to select different therapies. There are four categories in this tumor microenvironment based classification. One is myeloid where bisphosphonates and CSF1 receptor inhibitor will help. Then there is a mesenchymal group where antifibrotic therapy may be there. Then there is an inflamed and immunogenic group and as the name suggests this is the group where immunotherapy will help and there is a non-inflamed and weak expression of all microenvironment signatures and these are the areas where cytotoxic and modulating agents will help. So each of these different types has studied using these techniques on tumor microenvironment give you an idea of which of them is going to respond best and therefore will have better prognosis to upcoming newer therapies. So immunotherapy is helpful in the immunogenic TME and the prognosis is best in this group followed by the I1 or the non-inflamed uh, group where the prognosis is 42 months whereas the mesenchymal group we know a lot of fibrosis in these tumors the therapeutic drugs don't penetrate and this is the group with the worst prognosis. So now for unresectable and recurrent disease, a lot of studies are going on in this area. But what you need to remember is that the Topaz 1 trial has given the best possible guideline. And where we select these patients, it's patient fitness based, organ fitness based, biopsy, molecular testing and NGS. And then we are looking at downstaging or downstaging leading to next line therapy if there is not enough downstaging. So Topaz 1 trial in unresectable or recurrent disease, locally advanced metastatic disease, it is the first line therapy. It is cisplatin, gemcitabine and durvalumab which is immunotherapy for 8 cycles and this is followed by surgery if there is downstaging or maintenance of durvalumab. So these are the two options and this is Topaz 1 trial. ABC2 trial was Cisgem, Keynote was combining Pembrolizumab. But what is the current recommended first line as per guidelines based on Topaz 1 trial? So if we look at one of our case, this was a poorly differentiated IHCC small duct PB type and microsatellite stable, no actionable targets. And we use this patient for the Topaz 1 approach, Gemsis 1 cycle was given till we approved Durvalumab and then we got Gemsitabin cisplatin with Durvalumab. Five cycles have been given so far, total of six cycles. And this patient has actually responded so well that now we are contemplating surgery in this case. So that is a beauty of these therapies. Sometimes when selected appropriately, the patients may get a lot of benefit. So this patient may undergo surgery in near future. For other therapies, targeted therapies in locally advanced metastatic and recurrent disease, IDH1 mutation and FGFR2 mutation, HER2 new mutation, BRAF mutation, MSI, KRAS, NTRK and red gene fusion. All of these are there especially in gallbladder cancer but also seen in intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma most commonly are IDH1 mutation and FGFR2 mutation and both these agents now have targeted therapy. So this table you can remember whenever you hear a specific mutation, the drugs are the same be it any tumor. So we discussed entrectinib and lerotractinib in pancreatic cancer also. It's an NTRK gene mutation and rearrangement uh, drug. 
it is in phase one and two trial, but in future it may become a drug of choice for patients with NTRK mutation. We also discussed infigratinib, which is FGFR2 based drug, and it is again a target. Evocidinib IDH1 mutation, the first two are very commonly seen in intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma. HER2 new mutation, we all know trastuzumab and pertuzumab are used. RET mutation and BRCA mutation, then we are looking at Olaparib. So some of the commonly used systemic therapies in unresectable disease, chemotherapy as we have discussed. Now the first line is Durva, Gemcitabine, Cisplatin, that is a chemotherapy and immunotherapy combination. Biomarker driven therapy, we have looked at FGFR2 as well as IDH1 mutations, which are seen in nearly 10 to 20 percent of cholangiocarcinoma cases, which are intrahepatic. For case 3, we used chemo first, but now currently second line is ongoing because the patient has not responded well. Unfortunately, surgery is not an option for this patient and the patient is going to go on chemotherapy. So, algorithmic approach, we have seen all these points. Now, this is the latest guideline on intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma. Suspected case diagnosis, then MRI, CT, PET. Resectable disease goes on surgery and capsidabine based on the BILCAP trial. Unresectable disease goes on systemic therapy where the first line now is based on the TOPAS-1 trial. And if that does not work and there is disease progression, then it goes on second line systemic therapy, which can be immunotherapy or targeted therapy or simple chemotherapy. If there is a single lesion less than 2 cm in a patient with cirrhosis, then we go at the next form of therapy, which is liver transplant. Limited data on liver transplant in IHCC, but now you can identify three groups of indications. One is when there is a cirrhotic future liver remnant with resectable disease. Then there is a very early disease that is less than 2 cm in cirrhotic liver based on trial, whereas less than 3 cm in cirrhotic liver based on EASL guidelines. Unresectable liver limited disease without cirrhosis after good response to neoadjuvant therapy for six months. All these three groups of indications are currently in trial setting when it comes to liver transplant in IHCC. Vascular invasion, lymph node disease are contraindications, extrahepatic disease and progression on chemotherapy, unfavorable tumor biology are all contraindications. So if we look at the recent a published trial, this is in the American Journal of Transplantation. The outcomes have not been good. Out of 65 patients that were referred, only 18 patients finally underwent transplant. So when it comes to intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma, anatomically, it is all the disease that is beyond the second order bile duct. Its subtypes include mass forming periductal infiltrating and mass forming plus periductal infiltrating large duct and small duct type pathophysiology the most important risk factors are cirrhosis non cirrhotic biliary pathologies and these are the points where you have surveillance strategy mri plus mrcp is preferred for diagnosis pet is done in all cases staging lab and eus is required in selected cases when it's resectable disease, an anatomic resection with 1 cm margin is preferred. Adjuvant capsitabine is given based on BILCAP trial. For unresectable disease, whether it's locally advanced or metastatic, a biopsy followed by topaz-1 regime that is durvalumab-based therapy. Second-line therapy, consideration for transplant based on three indications that we discussed. And if not, local regional therapies, but these are not a part of guidelines currently as local regional therapies data is very limited when it comes to intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma. Thank you.